What? <laughs> so, we built this Solid Ash TV cabinet in the workshop this week. I mean, think about it, probably wasn't a week, more like two weeks, potentially three. But continue watching the video and you'll find out how we made it. Wow, I actually did the intro all in one take because it only took one take, not 29. <laughs> so, we are starting with some pre-machined or pre-milled or PAR, planed all round, or S4S, surfaced on all four sides, ash boards. There's so many ways to say it, but these boards have been sat in the workshop for some time and they've shifted a little bit, so I'm just giving them a little helping hand through the surface planer, or joiner, or is it jointer? And then the table saw, and then, hey presto. Now I'm using my Domino XL here, purely for alignment bases, but you can of course use dowels, or even a biscuit jointer, jig, joiner, is it again, joiner, jointer? Someone answer this in the comments and let me know. <laughs> All I'm essentially doing here is making big ass panels. The one on the workbench, get yeah, that one, uh, is basically the bottom part of the TV unit. And the two behind me sat on the floor there, they will become the top two sides and a middle divider. I've glued these up in two sections because one is bloody huge. So it just makes it easier, but I'm about to turn these two into one. I swear there's a Spice Girls reference there somewhere. <laughs> Now, you'd think I would have taken the clamps off before actually trying to lift this thing. <laughs> and the reason we're doing this in one long arse panel is because our clients have asked us to do a waterfall mitre joint. It's also called a wraparound mitre joint where the grain will flow from the top all the way down to the sides. And later on in the video, you'll see how I accomplish that. And then once those big panels are all nice and dry, I'll scrape off all the excess glue with the paint scraper and then give it a nice little tickle with my sander. Uh, this is basically going to help it to go through the table saw, which I'm about to do now. There we are. Uh, as you can see, it's actually quite deep. It's 65 centimetres, which I think is a 25 and a half inches. So yeah, quite deep for a TV unit. Here I'm just cutting that middle divider that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I'll chop any track saw chop and done. At the beginning of the video, you may have noticed a beautiful little chamfer detail. It adds a little bit of... Je ne sais quoi, should we say. <laughs> um, I do this on the table saw, as you can see, but you can do it with a track saw, or if you have the right bit, you can use a router if you have the right bit. So now I'm cutting the top, the bottom, and the two sides into their square sections, but without the mitres just yet. I personally prefer to get them into these square sections and then do the mitres afterwards. I just find it way easier. So they're the four sections, but with the middle divider there. Now it's the butt clenching task of the mitres. All I would say, however you're doing this, whether it's with the track saw, table saw, router, just take your time and follow those cuts that you've already made. And then hopefully it should start to look something like this. Now I'm marking up for the biscuit joints, which I'm about to do now. Uh, I don't have the adapter for the Domino XL, so otherwise I'd use that, but this works just as well. So this is for the stopped dado, which is gonna house the middle divider. I've, I cut that for the top and bottom panel, and then this is the middle divider. And yes, that is a dado. <laughs> I am in the UK. Yeah, I know, it's mental, right? It's mental. I'm in the UK and I have a dado stack. <laughs> but you'll see exactly what I've done here. So I've done the rebates on the sides and it slots right in there. Look. Then on to some pre-sanding for the internals and then some cleanup. And then I actually put the finish on. Like I put the finish on the internals before the glue up, but I forgot to film it. Ugh. For this glue up, I actually decided to do something different and make some calls. Uh, these are gonna have like 45 degree ends on them and they're gonna clamp to each end of the panel and then I can get that 45 degree pressure correctly on each point. I'm still undecided whether this was actually a good thing or not. So yeah, it's, uh, it's one to work on. So next morning, and the TV unit is on the floor out of the clamps, as you can see, and I'm just working out the doors. Same process as before, cutting one edge on the jointer or surface planer, and then through the table saw, and then do another glue up. And here is Katie, AKA my wife, and AKA the co-founder to our business, Fox and Monkey. Yeah, she's the fox, of course. <laughs> then you may as well just sand while you're waiting for the doors to dry. 
<sighs> I do get lonely in the workshop. <laughs> um, so yeah, get them out the clamps, same as before with the panels, give them a good sand, cut them to size. Uh, I'm just using my crosscut sled here, so do it however you feel is safe or easiest for you. So for the handles on the doors, we are going for an inset handle, and luckily, Axminster to do this little route a bit called the draw pull cutter thingy. I don't know the full tone, but it's a draw pull cutter. After the cuts, all it needs is some little chisel work, some sanding, and then yeah, it's looking fine and dandy. To install the hinges, I'm using this wicked Craig jig, which is super handy. Um, I'll link it down in the description box below. But yeah, they're simple Euro hinges, so nothing fancy. Moving swiftly on to legs. So I made a quick template of the shape that I wanted, marked them out on the board and then rough cut them on the bandsaw and then final cut them on this table saw jig thing, which is a whole other video in itself, but it is super handy to have in the workshop. Honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. There's a clip coming up here that I'm so scared of. I should have stopped it, it's dangerous, so I wouldn't recommend it, but it's about to go down that kind <laughs> uh, Since filming this, I have made uh, a zero clearance insert, which I would highly recommend. Oh, that was fine. But there, yeah, there are the legs, all done. Just cutting the cross supports down to final length, um, and then these will attach to the legs. And I'm doing that by using the domino. Again, you can use a dowel jig. I probably wouldn't do it with a biscuit joint. It probably is not that strong enough, uh, but a dowel uh, jig will be absolutely fine. So just making some pre-drilled holes before I do the whole clue up. This is to basically uh, so the bolts can go through into the underside of the TV unit uh, and I'm using threaded inserts and some black headed pan bolts. Really simple. And then just doing the last glue up of this TV unit. Oh, it's so satisfying getting to this point, isn't it, of the end of a build because you're so, so close. I put my hands up. I did forget to film me installing the threaded inserts, but I think you get it. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Right. This isn't advertising, God knows what else is. Hilarious that I'm also wearing the t-shirt. Just coincidence today. Oi. Done. Oh, and then tomorrow, Wet the feet on, the doors back on, and then I'll show you. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all of that lot. Comment below what you think. And yeah, follow along. <laughs> no, just no. So many texts, it's just so many texts.